Ah, wonderful. Good evening here at the Digital Courage stage. Welcome to the next talk. We we have a signal angel, so if you have some questions to the talk, you can do this, especially on Mastodon in the Fediburn, Mastodon.social, Digital Courage.social. Digital Courage Social or at Chaos Social. Please use the hashtag CCC Camp or CC Camp 23 Digital Courage, and then our uh, signal angel will see the, your question and forward it uh, at the end of the talk. Dear hackers, we didn't. Unfortunately, you were absent at the time of delivery. Please uh, get it at the chaos post. This would work quite well at the camp, but at, in the real world, that's not the case anymore. The post DHL group began in the last years to 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 force users to use digital products. They reduced human interactions in their logistics <laughs> in their logistics <laughs> yeah you shall present me you should not uh, have my talk please <laughs> well um um yeah dhl got uh, an award for this and i won't tell more now and it was awarded by our uh, Rena Tangens, which is a, a jury member since 2002, and which will tell you why DHL. Ah, oh, it's standing behind me. It's uh, sensational. Nice to see. But yeah, she will tell you more about why uh, Post DHL Group got this prize. Yeah, I was already being presented. Thank you. I would like to add that I also founded Digital Courage in the year 1997. There's a round of applause for this. In 2006, until then, until 2006, we we worked um, for free, but in in the meantime, there are also some paid members. With this, we can do quite a lot. For instance, organizing a program in a tent like this. Big Brother Awards are one of our most important projects since the year 2000, and we would like to focus important topics. It, it, we, we present certain topics to the public on certain, on certain days in the year. That's the one, the one uh, time in the year where we take a lot of effort to to present these uh, big bro our Big Brother awards. Some of you might have seen it. There is uh, an award which actually exists, and but uh, <laughs> but. Uh, our these usually do not come because it's not that well loved. But there are some exceptions because the data protection responsible from Microsoft he came and took the prize, and also the data protection responsible of Telecom came by. And but the telecom also asked if they might get a big brother award because they think they might have earned it. I said that uh, I cannot, uh, th but they, that they should have the that they should save the the date, but that I cannot take something from the jury in before. That was the case when they. When they look, when they uh, survived their own people, and uh, this gave a law lawsuit, which came quite expensive f for them. 
But I don't want to talk about this. Usually the nominees get their prize only, or the awardees get, get the prize only when they are on site. So we brought uh, them to their um, shareholder gathering, and they didn't tell about their the event, but uh, they got an invitation from the critical of the shareholders of Bayer. And when you are a shareholder, you are allowed to get in. So we, with the help of the chaos in uh, Cologne, we got in and um, handed out flyers. And we are allowed to um, to get to have ta talking rights. And uh, and I addressed. Um, I ad I addressed uh, the board with some questions, and I have never had some so hostile uh, audience like there. So now we come to the prize award winner from this year. Um, I was thinking I had done so much work with the um, with the award speech, so I'm going to present it to you now. And what happened afterwards was also very interesting. So, dear award winner. The, the the joke has been um, uh, t taken before. Dear award winner, unfortunately, you were absent at the time of delivery, so now you're getting a public delivery uh, a public delivery instead. The Big Brother Award in the Customer Protection category goes to Deutsche Post DHL, DHL Group. Because they changed the technical settings of their parcel lockers. Oh. Do you remember the times when children were allowed to play outside unsupervised? Sometimes they played tricks. They rang random doorbells and ran away as fast as they could. These children are now adults and currently work for DHL. If you're careful, please don't don't ring and directly thro uh, directly put a. Uh, a notification into your post box and say that you have never s never uh, uh, seen the the, uh, the recipient so it goes to the neighbor or to the next post office where you can get it soon but in parentheses not today and if you're lucky you get it in a parcel box in your vicinity if you're lucky, in the box lo locker at the supermarket around the corner, with bad luck, it goes to the other end of the town. So you could sign up for the to the uh, for the pa parcel locker and uh, can sign up and get a pin for the parcel locker, and you could collect the parcel anytime, 24/7. It came as a less pleasant surprise if you haven't registered for the parcel lock at all, but your parcel has still been re redirected there. Especially if it happens to the new type, the so-called lean parcel locker. Here we just see an, an old model with a display and um, reading, reading slot for the card. But especially if it's a newer model, which Post DHL rolled out, these days, the so-called lean parcel locker, so such a lean parcel locker no longer has a display, nor has it a card reader, and you are asking yourself, you have, wha how do I get my parcel and have no clue what to do? So you see this, noti this notification, you need to install an app. So your smartphone is obligatory. You need to have it. If you don't, well, lean means that you can now not only do without the display, but technically, what, what, what? So technically, that means your smart technically that means your smartphone will have to establish a Bluetooth low energy connection to the pass locker, and. Also, to, you will have to have an internet connection to forward that correction. And that will get forwarded to the Post and DHL app, to the main Post data center via mobile communication, 
and without a connection to the data center, such news posts the locker is as thick as a brick and has no idea what is being, get, being kept for whom in which locker. So the Deutsche Post saves the expense for setting up pass lockers and hands over the obligation to you. So if you are in an, inter in an area with poor internet connection, well, bad luck. If your data plan is used up, well, bad luck. If you don't have a smartphone, well, forget about getting your pack packet. Without a smartphone, you're basically screwed. So there are, however, good reasons for not having a smartphone. These are, these are those who simply can't afford one, or others may be too old, or don't want to deal with the technology, but still like receiving parcels. And finally, there are, pe there are people with high technological affinity who, precisely because their expert knowledge, refuse to constantly walk around with sh such a pocket spy. No, the opposed DHL. It's not at all okay to presuppose that every man and woman has to have a smartphone. So even for those who do own a smartphone, there are good reasons for not wanting to install the app. For example, the fact that the app starts transmitting data as soon as it has as it been started. The IT security expert Mike Cookets checked its behavior and found the following in the analysis. The app establishes connection to Google Firebase, Adobe Incorporated USA, to the Adobe Experience Cloud, among others, Google Firebase, also USA, and some others. Mind you, this all happens in the background without your knowledge, even before you even have interacted with the app in any way. And then you get as you, uh, as you have expected, a cookie banner. The usual procedure starts through, through to manipulative design that trick you into selecting the red button that says, accept all. But even if you manage to select confirm, prefer confirm preferences, you are by no means safe from further trackers. So another connection to Adobe is established and more data are provided for the purpose of measuring user behavior. Now, the P Peter Hense, a lawyer, has checked the legal status of the app and he concludes that the European General Data Protection Regulation, GDPR, as well as the Telecommunic Telecommunications Telemedia Data Protection Act, the German aberration as TTD TTDSG, are completely dis disregarded. After all, transmitting data to Google and Adobe, both based in the US, it requires user consent. The app, however, starts transmitting even before the consent banner is even presented. They just don't care. Just clicking accept all is not in fact sufficient for informed consent. This would require previous and clear information about the personal economical consequences that consent, that consent to the use of data for tracking may have. The Deutsche Post does not provide such information at all. Thus, there is no valid consent and therefore any data processing, data processing on this basis is simply illegal. For such violence of, applic of applicable law of the GDPR, the GDPR provides a four considerable fines. 4% of DHL's global turnover, which are totaling 94 billion in 2022, is a sum with a view of which even the executive board should actually develop an interest in data protection. Mike Kukertz informed the Deutsche Post AG DHL of the technical and legal analysis of the app. Judging by Deutsche, Post's, uh, Deutsche Post AG's answer, they, did so, they do not see the point at all. In short, everything is fine, there is nothing to see, please move on. This formerly state-owned company assumes that, being a stock corporation, it can just ignore applicable law as it pleases, and it takes itself to be entirely immune to criticism or prosecution. 
It would, however, be perfectly possible to program parcel lockers in uh, to a privacy and consumer-friendly way. We are wondering where the less than adequate design of parcel lockers and the app is the result of bad intentions or sheer ignorance. The, questions, the question becomes more poignant once you know that Deutsche Post DHL are currently laying off half of the IT department in charge. DHL serves time and money on IT and then wants us to force us into its initial uh, to, uh, to force us to use its crappy software. So forcing the customers to use smartphones and the app at the parcel lockers plus unauthorized data transmission to tracking companies alone would be worthy of a Big Brother award. On top of that though, Deutsche Post DHL deserves a special award in the hypocrisy category. The reasons they give for lean parcel lockers are, believe it or not, sustainable sustainability and protection of the environment and climate. Yeah, cool idea to put solar panels on top. They try to make people believe, believe that the parcel delivery too is a climate protection after all. DHL deliver, definitely emits less CO2 by spawning, by spawning off the parcel into the parcel lockers at all rather than taking them to their respective destinations. CO2, however, is then emitted by customers who have to drive the parcel lockers to do the parcel lockers individually to pick up their parcels. Overall, probably not a win for the climate, but a win for Deutsche Post DHL. This Big Brother Award is about the tendency to put super surreptitious pressure on people to go along with surveillance, and stru surveillance structures. A login is acquired in one place, cash is no longer accepted in another, here you have to install an app, there you are denied access to service-related information unless you use a smartphone or to service altogether. Those who don't comply are facing more and more difficult difficulties in everyday life. That is what we call digital coercion. Why are we giving the at in f at all why why do we give Deutsche Post at all, Deutsche Post DHL of all people the Big Brother Award? This revise a little context is is the microphone working? Are there are there cutouts? Can we check? Tech is checking. Okay, I continue talking. So, on the 1st of January 1995, the Post AG has become a um, uh, private equity uh, uh, organization and took over the letter service, which was in, uh, which was before acquired by the, by the state. Um, quick. So the post took over all the obligations associated with it. Quick microphone change. So that is basic service for everyone, reliability, delivery to the smallest island of the North Sea. In fact, the letter service Here's, here's a nice picture of Donald who is struggling with his conscience because he needs to, because he lost uh, a letter from Gustav Ganz to Daisy. And there's this, this nice statue of a post delivery person who tried. So in fact, uh, letter service was uh, the cash flow for years, or the cash cow for years, and they made a, made a lot of money. Nevertheless, they charged more and more for postage. We have reason to suspect that with this uh, that that they cross-funded the parcel service in order to get rid of competitors and offering this service at low prices. Deutsche Post DHL Group is now the leading company in logistics worldwide. Now, maybe you have uh, seen that uh, for the first of on the 1st of July on this year, not soon after the Big Brother Awards, 
it's not called uh, post again it's all called DHL now so this uh, society has reformed now that the parcel service is booming and letters are replaced by emails the letter service is not as profitable anymore but during the postal strike in 2023 Deutsche Post AG threatened to simply get rid of the letter service this year already in case of this would mean the, the post would would tell to the regulatory agency that they don't want to do it again and then they wouldn't do it again and then they it would have to be renegotiated and they could uh, work with cheap subcontractors and this is what they threatened to the striking people if you yeah that they will sell them to threaten to subcontractors um, the by the way the regulation of uh, the post AG are part of uh, law the universal Postal Service Regulation or Post Universal Dienstleistungsverordnung in German. These obligations have not been correctly fulfilled by the Post for years because of long deliveries and delivery times and poor quality in letter delivery um, and the lack of post office branches, especially in the in the country. They have given a rise in a constantly growing number of complaints to the Federal Network Agency, the Bundesnetzagentur. Deutsche Post AG, however, does not make an effort to improve. In instead, they pretend that they don't have to do it and get rid of their duties. They demand changes in the laws concerning mail service. According to them, uh, longer delivery times should be okay, and if letters have to arrive the next day, we are supposed to pay extra. The plan is to have additional machines, so-called post stations or poststationen, would take over the post offices. They will be pimped parcel lockers, which also offer letter services. These post stations, uh, have a look at them, they are not well reachable for um, for small people like children or for people in a wheelchair and almost not accessible for blind people. There are no more people on site. You may, you may rem remember this uh, cartoon from Touche which all, uh, from the old lady who always wants to buy a one mark stamp. But there isn't any more who helps me or could, can tell me, hey, this uh, parcel cannot be sent as this. You, you have to do otherwise. More, uh, more side effects is that in the future you won't be able to buy a stamp as, uh, with cash, with physical cash, but you will need a credit card. That's, uh, that's a new case of uh, digital coercion. The, ch the current coercion, they like, or the, the post AG has, has uh, made this, has made this pleasant to the current um, government with uh, climate protection and with uh, getting cheaper. They They, del uh, <laughs> they slipped the current, they slipped it to the current government, the idea to legal the changes and to make it suitably for each party. Something to, for innovation and something with uh, climate protection. But a warning to the members of the German Parliament, the Federal Network Agency and those fighting for the climate in the Ministry of economics don't be deceived it's not do not do the parcel lockers were up or indispensable it's not a matter of an individual structure 
but the whole universe of permanent surveillance. It's no matter of uh, simple gadgets or accessibly by smartphone. It's a basic need that everyone has, like getting hold of a parcel someone sent to me. It's not about the money. It's about the reckless attitude which a company tries to privatize profit and lives and leave liabilities to the community. Dear po Deutsche Post again, you have been sent a notification of your Big Brother Award. No, the Big Brother Award will not be delivered to you. You will have to collect it. Collect it. A nap is not required for this. Now, I come to the part what happened later. It's not a. It's no uh, secret that they don't like this uh, award. But what they did afterwards is uh, is even more. There, there's even another feature which is used to uh, distribute information. So that is the option to have a second, to have your parcel um, delivered a second time or attempted to de 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 be delivered a second time, which has been noted on these delivery notice or postcards f uh, um, in the past years. But this notice has been has been removed because Post DHL doesn't want it. And um, there is an option on the po on the website of DHL. And it is well hidden because uh, they don't want you to use it. But we found this feature and we uh, created a new site for exactly this purpose and uh, crafted um, a website which is called um, similar to uh, Please uh, uh, Deliver Again. So they changed the link internally, but they, we found it again. And so now the internal, internal mass messages in the in DHL, um, there are warnings from um, fake apps, and what happens regularly is that we uh, went to one some of these stations to make photos, and we met people who were completely lost um, and didn't know how to get. To, to collect their parcel. And so we uh, took these stickers and took, the, took those to the, to the, um, to the uh, parcel stations. And uh, so DHL warned uh, customers not to use, um, to, to, to use the, the domain Neu Zustellen or uh, Deliver Again, because it's dangerous that they, they can um, leak data of private customers, which DS DHL actually does. So if you want to help um, inform the, the people, you can get the stickers from us um, to stick them to your local postal package station. They are transparent so that the color of the underlying um, packet station can be beautifully seen. So on this website, we have explained what actually happens in the background, what we do. There's a link um, to the to the uh, DHL website. So why is this an ex extra um, extra uh, uh, bad thing by the DHL? Because uh, DHL declared that packing stations are basic delivery service. And um, Post DHL says, because says it's just for people who actually opt in to um, get their packages delivered to the station, because there is the option to have a second delivery attempt. But they are hiding the service so well that it's actually quite hard or next thing possible that people actually use it. So the the uh, Bundesdatenschutzbeauftragte uh, has uh, done a statement and 
uh, that he, he got complaints that the um, second uh, delivery attempt, well, that was too quick. <laughs> so the I uh, know a new um, law uh, 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 regarding the post is in draft and it will be in August this month in discussion and we will um, we will have look after the progression so I have been invited to the Verbraucherschutz mystery and there has been a lo long talk uh, several hours and uh, I had just five minutes to explain the situation but uh, what I was very happy about um, the, res the, the uh, summary by uh, Steffi Lemke, who uh, said, uh, uh, who, who uh, um, said about uh, the digital coercion and um, right to a self-chosen life is very important or is a problem. So we have allies in the uh, customer protection agency but we don't know if they have enough leverage so the law is not very long so uh, you can look at it in the in the department for for um, trade and climate climate uh, protection so when the um, draft is published I will look into it and see where there is actually climate uh, climate protection efforts and where there's um, more more efforts to force people to use digital services oh one info maybe um, in contrast to Deutsche Bahn AG there which is in 100 percent um, owned by the German government. DHL Post AG is only owned by 20% uh, by the state and 80% in private hands. So um, the state has to has to regulate how they ha have to do their business. And of course, um, due to private interests, they try to minimize the, the basic coverage and maximize their um, gains and earnings. So they are um, optimized to, to uh, earn as much money as possible. Maybe some of you remind this. Uh, for the other one, I will tell it now. Uh, post, uh, you, know, you know this logo, don't you? It's, uh, it can be seen often at camp. The, this logo comes from uh, the natural enemy when we had uh, when we um, developed telecommunication, because when you can uh, add a modem to a telephone line, why did you use? Uh, uh, you you needed a post approval, but you didn't get it just like this, because it had to be checked and. So there were only uh, slow modems, which cost like uh, a thousand eight hundred Deutsche Mark, whereas you could buy a much cheaper modem without a postal check, but it was prohibited to connect it to the telephone network, and it was actually illegal. Yeah, it was illegal. It was not just not allowed; it was illegal, and people were were suited by it. Of course, uh, we know people who who did it and tried or tried to do it. And if you tried to if you tried to use a payable and acceptable modem, it was always like half a leaf illegal. That's why we thought that it might be a good idea. The post could be um, pr privatized so they might change certain things and in retrospective i would say no it was not the best idea we 
I mean, we say we should also talk about uh, errors that we made, uh, mistakes. The rules that this company now has to adhere to, we have to adjust them, otherwise it will not end well for society. I I also had it, something, the, the yellow stains, etc. Um, digital crutch, when uh, when was uh, founded, had another name, and which was a parody of the abs uh, abstruse um, shortcuts of the German Post when they still were um, responsible for the telecommunication services, like the FETUP or GETUP, if I like it's a Fernsprechapparat, basically what other people call a telephone. But if the yeah, if the if the acronym is more complicated than the thing per se, we have to critically think about it. Even now, what happens with uh, now state um, companies, and we also have to talk about basic services. So what do we need? Uh, we need uh, like environment friendly mobility. So what do we have to force these uh, companies to like um, travel companies to because it should be the it should not be the first goal that they earn a lot of money. It should be the first goal that there is something good for society. And do we still have uh, fun with DHL? And this will stay like this. Thank you for your attention. And now we can continue with the questions. Thank you for this uh, nice talk. Yes, we still have time. Uh, we have a lot of time for questions and remarks. Please, uh, please um, uh, Raise your hand, and I will uh, give you the microphone, and then you can ask it. Be brave. What, was I so exhausting to you? What do you think? What uh, would it uh, help if, in the new law, there it should be? Yeah, it, it should not be done by, by Parliament. Sorry, I didn't. The hope is to make the law better. Because the law is us it's at the moment not strict enough. And the um, Bundesnetzagentur, which uh, has surveillance about the, the letter service, and one change of the one plant change of the law is positive because the agency could now also sue the DHL, and that's a good thing. But we also have to take care that no negative things get into the new law, and that's why we need to um, to educate politicians or people from the Ministry of economy. One anecdote, the Parkstation that you show, it even has text on it. I work in a, I work on a location which uh, is where there is a, um, where there is a the packet locker, but it's in an area which is locked. You cannot just enter it. So I thought, uh, okay, that's well for me because I um, work within this area and um, but they also deliver parcels to this uh, parcel locker which is inside a locked area and there's not even something written on that pack station on this uh, parcel locker and I had to tell some people who were standing there and looking f for the parcel locker I had to tell them where they are so um, yeah, well, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I use this pack station. I like it, but uh, there should always be the possibility for people who don't want to do this, which might be a minority probably. 
So the question is, how should we communicate all this? So in the with atomic of digital coercion, we thought about this, and we are all quite well with technology, and we think that just a few people who don't like this, but an, op an official statistics says that about six percent, not including the real seniors or the small children, have never been online, and that's n not. That's similar in other European countries. It's an official statistics done by the starters. Have a look at their website. You can check this there. We also linked it on the digital caution site at Digital Courage. And there is also this and this topic it gets noticed more and more. We had uh, an article in the Süddeutsche uh, Zeitung and this uh, had, they had a lot of reactions. They had a lot of letters from uh, people who actually were complaining about what what happened there. There was even a petition from a Spanish guy who a, um, a doctor, which does not work anymore, which, uh, but the name of the petition was, I'm old, but I'm not an idiot. Uh, he has Parkinson and he doesn't want to do um, things at an automa yeah, at the machine because he he's not sure. Yeah, he, he could maybe touch a wrong button because of his Parkinson and he would like not to use machines to make his uh, bank banking stuff. So the bank uh, reacted to it and said, yes, we will uh, open the the offices longer. And it, yeah, what I want to say is it has to do with solidarity. We people who are here, we, we can use the machines, we can use the apps. But who knows if we can still do it in a few years when we get older and with the technology which will be um, then, which will be have evolved too. I know a lot of tele technology have been people which do not have a smartphone, and we would, should fight for being it like this. And we should also fight for uh, cash, for real cash, because that's part of uh, freedom and being non surveilled. Thanks for your talk. It was very, very nice. Um, the speech was very nice. I wa was wondering, um, do this, the um, the uh, venues where the pack stations are um, are placed, which is usually Lidl, 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 which is a big German supermarket, or Kaufland, uh, even bigger supermarket, and um, the parking lots are closed eventually after closing off the shop and uh, so it's on their property and they are not reachable from the outside after closing down. Well, I'm pretty sure that uh, the shops uh, earn money for providing that space. Amazon has also um, provided packing stations. They are co cooperating and they are earning money. For this purpose, DHL likes uh, these lean uh, displayless pack stations because they don't need s uh, need uh, power and without bluetooth or with bluetooth and without display and without much power driving electronics um, they only need to power the the mechanism for the for the uh, doors which is done can be done by the solar panels, so they don't need to um, don't need much effort to to get um, infrastructure for um, for network and power. Oh, here is another question. Thank you, Rena, for this talk. I am from Switzerland, and uh, I have the I I feel it's going very similar in Switzerland. It's remind me really terribly and uh, in similar things. 
Are you in contact with with organizations in Switzerland? Are you uh, exchanging experiences? Experiences? Well, yes, there are uh, Big Brother Awards in Switzerland. They are an international project. We have a mailing list to exchange um, offenders, and uh, there are different different uh, uh, in uh, here and there in different countries. And sometimes we exchange and and nominate even uh, co uh, um, companies in other in other countries, but we don't haven't extended our our research to Switzerland yet. It was very, very um, exhausting and um, long and took a lot of effort. Um, they even doubted that the the uh, the, the award speech uh, has been technically, technic technically or in technical terms wrong because they they need an internet connection, and uh, I, I was I was really worried that I have to change this the the speech. And then I found out now the stations actually do not have an their own internet connection. So you this is a very clear info. Yeah, thank you very much again, and a warm applause to Rena.